you guys deserve an explanation on why I've been away for a long time. I'll get to that in due time. But what I want to let you know about today's video is we are diving into the magical world of quality of light, light quality. I've made videos uh, concerning the direction of light. I've made videos concerning the intensity of light. I'm going to link them up here or probably down in the description box below. Go check them out. This is a continuation of the concepts of light. I didn't finish it up before I left two months ago. So I'm back. I want us to quickly finish that just so that we can understand how best one can use lighting to, you know, elevate and enhance their images in the studio, outdoors, wherever it is you find yourself. Understanding the quality of light will make or break your image. I mean, you hear words being thrown around about quality of light, quality of light. You always think, is there a specific light I need to get to make sure my light is quality enough? Or is there a specific brand I have to buy? No, quality of light, like I said, is how soft or how hard your light is. So today's video, like I said, you're talking about you're talking about the quality of light, exploring how the quality of light will probably enhance and make sure your images come out more beautifully as ever. So I'm going to talk about the gears I'm using in today's video. I'm using the Godox AD600 as the main key light, which is the strobe light. I'll use varieties of modifiers, a bigger size, a medium size. There's one that bridges the gap between soft and hard light, which is a beauty dish. I'll use a cone to depict the hard light source. And if possible, if the sun pops up the way I want it to pop up, we'll probably use also that to depict that. It's a one light video, if I didn't mention, right? It's a one light video. The camera used in today's video will be the Canon EOS R, the H5 Sigma, no, not the Sigma, the H5 Canon 1.8 lens, which will probably be interchanged with the Canon 50 1.8 lens and the Godox S2T trigger. So yeah, that's about it when it comes to the gears involved in today's video. When we talk about quality of light, you're looking at a couple of things, which is mainly two things. I'm sure you know them. If you guess them right, let me know down in the comment section below. But quality of light has to deal with soft lighting and hard lighting. The main characteristic of a soft light is the easy transition of shadows on your subject. Is it an easy transition of shadows from the highlights into the midtones into the shadow region? Or is it a sharp transition, which then leaves us on hard light? So it also will depict the kind of mood you have in your image. We are not shooting in the studio today because I have experienced some power outage. Sorry for that. So I have brought the studio outdoors. One might ask, how can you achieve studio lights and outdoors? I'll make sure to explore those practical examples for you to understand how to combine both the ambient together with your strobe or artificial light source or how to kill the artificial, I'm sorry, how to kill the natural light source and just have your artificial light source. So we'll talk about a couple of things when we start shooting. I like the setup, it's simple, not as dramatic as I used to, you know. Pull all up in the studio, right? So we're getting ready. I think the outfit for the outfit choice for today's shoot and the colors in here will probably complement everything that we are doing. So yeah, stay locked. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, which is quite important. I was hoping to get to 10K when I came back two months after two months, but I'm still at 9.46. What have you guys been doing on my channel? Have you been watching the videos at all? Right? We might be facing some natural occurrences like the air blowing my backdrops and all. So, you know, natural occurrences happen. Accidents happen on sets. I hope to capture some so that I can use it for. But now, anyways, subscribe, like, share. Make sure you check out my digital store. I'll link it down in the description box below. Buy something, support the business. And yeah, I'll probably tell you why I was away for two months later at the end of the video. Carista. Is it X or C? Cause Okay. This is a lovely model Carista. You can check out her Instagram page down in the description box below. Go give her a follow. Maybe she'll be appearing more on our YouTube channel. Available for work, right? Yeah, available for work. Right. I'll link the glam person also down in the description box below. It's also available for work. Right, so as you can see I have my AD600. I'm starting with the seven inch cone. Is this seven inch? Well, let's see if it's seven. I'll check it and I'll probably leave the correct size down here. But yeah, I'll start with the cone. But what I would do is to properly expose for the environment, 
I'll take a picture with the environment and I'll pop up the settings. I'll mention them. I'll just pop up the settings, right? Then I'll introduce in the light. So the first image I'll take will probably be just that of the natural light. Currently it's cloudy, right? So it's going to probably work best for us. All right, let's just get shooting. Since the introductions are out of the way. So this is where most of the lights will be coming from. Your left side, right? So I would want you turning your face more to the left side, but your eyeballs will be here. And see, no, don't turn the head this way, the head will go this way, you get it. So this is a test shot with just the natural light. I'll start from ISO 250. I said I won't mention it, but I'll mention it. It's, ki it's kind of cloudy now, right? So ISO 250, let's go F 2.2, shutter speed one over, 640. Okay, you blinked. I don't need you to blink. Turn up a little bit. Right. So this is currently our ambient our ambient light from what we can see. I don't know if you can see the strobe flashing. Yes, it is. So change it. We we'll change the sync speed to high speed sync. It's a high speed sync option. If your trigger supports that and your strobe supports that, you're probably going to get to the high speed sync option. What it means is you can have your sync speed as faster as it comes, right? So currently my flash power is at 1 over 64. I'm going to kill the ambience, so I'm moving the ISO to 100 and my F to 2.2 shutter speed 1 over 800. Still with a flash part 1 over 64, yes. So now that is down, I'll increase the flash part to 1 over 32, start from there. I'm going to set it up to 16. Right, so this is at ISO 100 f2.2, shutter speed 1 over 800, and flash power at 1 over 16. So this is the hard light source coming in from our strobe. Luckily enough, we are having a very cloudy condition, right, from the ambient light. So it's not really going to affect so much of our image. And to explain the hard light, I did mention, this is a practical example of a hard light source. I did mention that you're going to see very sharp transition shadows. So if I pop up the image on the screen, you're seeing the Rembrandt being created on the right side of a cheek. The characteristic of it being a Rembrandt is as a result of the hard shadows created. And it's very prominent. You can also see how dark the right side of your face is. Always make sure you play with your shadows. Never ever. I mean, I've seen people do this when you're trying to take pictures and shadows are present in the image. They try to pin up and kill the shadows. Shadows are part of images. Make sure you play with them. Understand how they make your image. Oh, I'm talking to this. Understand how they make your image look moody. Understand how it adds to the drama of your image, right? So the introduction of shadows will probably help to make your image become better as it is. Okay, so I'll probably take a couple more test shots with the hard light. Right, send your face this way uh, and tiptoe your legs. Beautiful. Bring the eyeballs down. Eyeballs in this direction. No, not towards the light, towards here. Beautiful, keep it. Close your eyes if you can. And open your lips. Chin down. Chin down. No, you're yeah, sending a face this way. So, yeah, and chin down. Yeah, lovely, just like that. Chin up a little bit. This. Okay, so I have changed the modifier into a beauty dish. This is an 85 
was it an, I think 65 I am not so sure of the size I don't remember the size I'm about this in but I can bet it's an 85 yes it's an 85 beauty dish I'm still keeping the same flash power at 1 over 16 I am going to take a test shot right now and for some funny reason I like that of the beauty dish so send the face this way send the face and the eyeballs bring them here yeah there yeah that's fine beautiful keep it let the head go to your right your left side yeah too much bring the face back bring the face back yeah then it's the same beautiful keep that in the seat Close your eyes as we come. Alright. This is what the beauty dish is giving us. I'm going to pop it up on the screen. I like that soft blend I am getting as compared to the hard light source. Right? You can see a change in the definition of the shadow. You can see how easy going the shadow looks like. So the next modifier we can see here is my photo box, my trusted photo. I use this photo box almost all the time. I'm still keeping the flash power at 1 over 16. This is an 85 centimeter rice bowl soft box. It's a soft box that can be used as a beauty dish. It's quite deeper than the 85 centimeter beauty dish I just used right now, right? So I'm going to, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy this because it's a soft box. Soft boxes have diffusion layers. Right, so now we are entering into the world of soft lighting. Alright, keep it that way. Beautiful. Let the eyeballs come down. Yeah. Alright, after a second test shot, make sure you open the lips. Make sure you tiptoe. I oh, I like I like this poster. Right. So I haven't changed the settings, it's still at ISO 100 f2.2, shutter speed 1 over 800, flash power 1 over 16. You can clearly tell the loss of light as we keep on changing the modifier we are using. Currently, we have two diffusions coming through this, I mean coming from this particular modifier. So you're going to get a loss of light because it's passing through the diffusion, but as compared to the previous modifiers are used you can tell how soft and how easy the shadows transition from the highlights into the midtones then into the shadows i'll probably zoom in and compare all the differences and i love how this you know gives that light right i'll change to the last modifier which is the biggest modifier i own currently in the studio which is my seven feet parabolic i know you were thinking it will be the lax bounce no the lax bounce is too big to bring outside so I'll use a parabolic, then that will be the last thing we'll compare when it comes to how, you know, we we modify our light source. Okay, next we have the parabolic. Big, seven feet. Should be very soft because it's closer to it. The only contraption I don't like on my corridor is this, right? But yeah, you do with what we have. Okay, keep the same posture. Lean forward. Yeah. But no, but you're looking here, looking here. Look, look here. I mean, the poster wasn't great. That we can fix in an upcoming shoot. But what I like about this is how soft the modifier is, right? As compared to the previous softbox we used. This is a bigger light source, so a much more bigger spread. And an easy transition of the shadows. I know in there I did mention harshness. Harshness and hard light are two different statements, right? Harshness has to deal with the intensity of the light source. Many people forget to reduce the intensity of the light when they bring their light source closer to the subject to obtain what soft even light on their subject. I hope I'm making myself clear. So harshness 
probably has to do with specularity of light. If the light is too much, if the intensity of light is too much, even if it is in a bigger modifier, you're going to see a lot of highlights created on your subject and it's not going to be flattering, right? As compared to, you know, exposing correctly how the intensity of the light is, you probably get the source light you're looking for. So yeah, that brings us to the very end of today's video. Thank you so much for popping up on a short notice, right? She's been lovely. The outfit looks great. Oh, I forgot to mention who gave me the outfits. Link in the description box below. She makes splendid outfits, right? Yeah, so this is the simplest setup I've done outdoors. I'm going to do more as you guys know I always do, right? Probably show you whatever it is I will do at the end of the video. But I'm glad you guys accepted me coming back this for, from this long break I took. I know I said I'll tell you why. Maybe in another video, right? So watch. Watch out for my other video. But yeah, in all, the shoot was great. I love whatever it is I did. This is also a learning curve for me. I tell you all to always experiment on yourself, right? And as much as I'm doing this and teaching you guys, if you also take your time and experiment and do them yourself, you would understand the nuances that comes with shooting with all these different modifiers, creating the kind of mood you're looking out for, and also enhancing your images with the quality of light. So, Whenever you hear quality of light anywhere, this is what they mean. How soft or how hard your light source is. I hope I've made myself clear and taught you a thing or two about quality of light. Learn the two other previous videos, add them together, and then you would understand that. You would, you would see an improvement on how you use light and to, you know, elevate your photography. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Peace. Subscribe. Shana. Keep it. Hold it. Let's put your hands on your left.